In this problem, we have two tennis balls that are launched vertically upwards from exactly the same spot at one second intervals. Each tennis ball has initial speed of 25 meters per second. How high above the ground do they collide? So if we think about this, um, just try and think about this visually, right? Um, we've got this one, the first ball is shot off into the air, okay? Now, after one second, okay, another ball is shot off into the air, okay? Now, at some point, this blue one, okay, the one, the first ball, will start to fall and will collide with the second ball, okay? So, they'll only collide once the first ball has started falling, okay? Now, how are we going to model this? Well, it would make sense if we think about modeling the first ball, okay, and having a look at where it gets to after one second, so that then we can model the time, t, in the equations as the same thing, because we've got one particle starting here, one particle starting there, and then we can kind of see where the displacements will be the same, okay? So that's what we will go to do here. So let's have a look at that first ball, shall we? So the first ball, if we write out our SUVAT equations, okay. Now uh, we're just looking to see how far uh, up that first ball is, okay, after one second. So t is one. The initial velocity was 25, okay? I don't know the final velocity. I don't know the displacement. That's what I want to find out. The only other thing that I do know is the acceleration, which is just going to be due to gravity. So that's at minus 9.8, okay? So my target here is to work out that displacement. Um, it would also be useful to find out the velocity that it's traveling, okay? The more information I know about it, the better. So, let's think about this then. Uh, an equation that doesn't have the velocity uh, that finds me the displacement is number three. So, s is equal to ut plus one half a t squared. So, we've got 25 times t, so 25 times one, plus one half times minus 9.8 times one squared. Okay, so, We've got 25 plus a half of minus 9.8 times 1, which gets me 20.1, okay? So in the first second, um, so after one second, the first ball has gone 20.1 meters into the air. Okay, so I now know the 20.1, okay? That's its displacement after one second. Now, as for its velocity, I could use v equals u plus at here. So v is equal to u plus at. So u is 25, a is minus 9.8, and t is 1. So 25, take away 9.8, and that gets me 15.2. So after one second, it's traveling 15.2 meters per second. Okay? So that's the information I have about the first ball. Okay. Right. Now, let's box that information off. Okay. So now, okay, I'm going to model the particles from where they currently are. Okay. After that one second. Okay. So I've got the first ball. So we're going back to the first ball. So, su that. Okay. Now, its initial velocity now, after the one second, is the final velocity that we reached here, the 15.2. Now, I don't know the final velocity when those two balls are going to hit. I know that the acceleration is going to be the minus 9.8. That's fine. Okay. 
I don't know what the displacement's going to be when it hits, and I don't know the time when they hit either. Okay, so I don't really know an awful lot. However, what can I build from that? Because I want a, a displacement equation, okay, that incorporates the fact that it's starting from 20.1 meters higher uh, than the other particle. So I want an S that has the U and the A in it, okay, but um, doesn't have the T, okay. So the S uh, that I'm going to use here is that number three. So we've got S is equal to U T plus one half A T squared. Okay, so what have we got? We've got the S is equal to U 15.2 times T plus a half times A, so minus 4.9 T squared. Now that is the displacement, okay, uh, of the particle as if it's starting from the origin. We know it's not starting from the origin, okay? We know it's starting 20.1 meters high. And so we're going to add an extra 20.1 onto that, okay? That will give me an equation for the displacement of this particle relative to the other particle that we're going to look at, that second particle. Okay, so that's my first equation that I'm going to utilize. Now, how about the second particle? So the second particle, S, U, V, A, T. Now the second particle is just starting off, okay? It has initial speed of 25 meters per second. I don't know what its final velocity is gonna be. I know it's going to just be uh, uh, accelerating due to gravity, uh, pulling it downwards. Don't know time don't know the displacement. Now, I can utilize that same equation, the S equals UT plus half AT squared, for the second ball. So S is equal to U times T, so 25T, uh, plus a half AT squared, so minus 4.9T squared. And there's nothing added on to that, okay, because it's starting at the origin. Okay, so the idea here is that I've now set up two equations where the t is representing exactly the same time. Okay, it's not like um, the problem would have been if I'd started off with the initial uh, equation, so for the first particle using just t, I'm not taking into account that the t for the first ball and the t for the second ball are different. The t for the first ball is one second behind. Okay, so I would, need, would have needed to take account of that. Now, however, those t's are the same. So what I can do, and the displacements I want to be the same as well, so I can put one equal to the other. So I'm going to put the 15.2t, take away 4.9t squared plus 20.1, equal to the 25t minus 4.9t squared. Now the 4.9t squared, they cancel, they're gone. Okay, so now I can subtract the 15.2t from both sides. 25 take away 15.2 is 9.8. So I've got 9.8t is equal to 20.1. So if I do 20.1 divided by 9.8, I get 201 over 98 as the time, which is approximately... 2.05 seconds. So 2.05 seconds after the second ball has been fired, they collide. Okay? Or 3.05 seconds after the first particle, after the first ball has been fired. Okay? So I've now got T. So I can now substitute the T into either of these two equations to find S, the displacement. Okay? And the displacement is relative to the origin because I've incorporated the 20.1 there in that equation. So if I substitute into this equation, for example, um, we've got uh, 25 times the 201 over 98, take away 4.9 times the 201 over 98 squared, and I get 
0.6627551. So S is equal to 30. Well, seeing as we're using 9.8, this should be rounded to two significant figures. So 31 metres to two significant figures. Okay, that is how high above the ground the two particles collide. Okay, and that's that's how we can work it through. It took a little bit of uh, eking out uh, and uh, manipulation here to really think about a, a, a way of going through the problem. Okay, that's why it's more complicated, but certainly. Um, you could go on and look at, well, what if the particle was fired two seconds afterwards, for example, how would that change the result?